Hello and welcome. Today we're going to be talking about the time shift theorem of Laplace transforms. All right, this is going to be a pretty short video. It's really about one identity and uh, a one type of transform. So let's start with the Laplace transform. Let's take we take f of t. It's some sort of signal. All right, if I were to draw a graph of it, of course it has a domain for just the positive time, so at time zero, and we don't care about anything after that. We don't even we won't even consider it. And maybe it's something like this. Who knows? It could be anything. All right, but there is there's my f of t like that. Okay. So one thing that's we like to do often in Laplace transform is we might want to shift this in time. So for instance, I might have a t minus a where a is some positive number, right? And then we're going to have a graph like this. All right, so I tried to draw the same graph as before. Uh, I mean, these things are supposed to be. Uh, and right, the idea here is then, uh, because f is 0 for all times negative, if I do a shift forward in time, that right there being the distance a, I consider as the function 0 there. So the idea here is now this function f of t minus a, oops, f minus t, t minus a, uh, turns on turns on at time equals a now okay so we want to have a way of dealing with this so if I know how to take the Laplace transform of f by itself f of t and that's equal to capital F of s the question then is how do I take the Laplace transform of t minus a. How do I do that? Well, the answer is pretty straightforward, and that's the time shift theorem. And we're going to basically prove it, and then you can use this formula for every every time you see something like this. So the idea here is that f of t minus a, uh, it's zero for all those times there. So what I'm going to do is then I'm actually going to re-express this as actually f of t minus a times the heaviside of t minus a. Right, remember the heaviside is zero for all times less than a uh, for this particular expression. And that just kind of does, it's a little housekeeping here to make that work. All right, so now what I want to do then is I want to take the Laplace transform of f of t minus a times h of t minus a. And that's going to be the integral from zero to infinity of h t minus a times f t minus minus a e to the negative s t dt and without much extra work you can find out that really we could set this integral up to be uh, just f of t minus a starting at a e to the negative s t dt right from here what I want to do is actually take a u substitution of t minus a like that. All right, and that means du is equal to dt, but also that t is going to be equal to u plus a. All right? So if I put this all in, if I change variables now, it's going to start at zero again, because essentially I'm putting a right there, right? And it's going to go to infinity, just like before. But now we're going to write f of u. Every time there's a t minus a, I put a u in its place. But then what I'm going to do is actually, every t where I put, a, there's a t here, I have to put a u plus a. And that's going to be a u negative s a e to the negative s u. Okay, d u. Well, I can keep going along here and actually pull out this term right there. That factor there has nothing to do with u in it. So it's going to go e to the negative s a, integral 0 to infinity of f u e to the negative s u d u and this thing right there uh, we can see that's actually just capital F of s, the Laplace transform. So the identity is s times a f of s. Alright, so we've actually found a way to compute this. 
So I'm going to go to the next page and just re-express the same fact again. What we found is if Laplace transform of f of t is equal to capital F of s. That's already been computed. We know what it is. Okay. Uh, then, then Laplace transform of the Heaviside t minus a, and this is for a positive. It could be for a negative too, but I'll just think of time shifts to the right. F of t minus a. We can write this as now e to the negative s times a times capital F of s. And this is that time uh, shift theorem. Okay. All right. So the, the question then is, you know, what's the application of this? And the application is simple, is that often, you're, it, you know, it's, it's computing inverses. Okay, for instance, what if I have a, uh, I'll call it, uh, I'll call it g of s, and it's, I see an e to the negative 3 s, okay, times 4 all over s squared plus 16. All right. Uh, I want to now, the, the, the question that I have then is, I want to take the inverse Laplace transform of g of s. I want to find out what g of t is. Okay, I don't know the answer to that. Right, but I see that there is this e to the negative 3s. Right, so I can write g then is e to the negative 3s times uh, 4 over s squared plus 16. And this looks like the Laplace transform of sine 4t, right? And this is the idea that omega is equal to 4, right? All right. If, that's, if this is so, if I can recognize that this is a transform that, I, that I'm familiar with, then, then I know this is just going to be a time-shifted version of it. So I know that the, Laplace, the inverse Laplace transform of g then has to be equal to uh, 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 sine 4t. Um, now the question then is sine 4t, but what are we going to do? We're going to actually now shift time by uh, 3, right, like that. Okay, so that's what we're going to do uh, to find this inverse Laplace transform. So the idea here is that if sine uh, 4t is equal to f of t, and Laplace transform of sine uh, uh, 4t, we know that from the Laplace transform table, so that's going to be this, uh, 4 squared, which is 16, and then that means Laplace transform of sine uh, 4 times t minus 3. I've done a time shift on this thing. That's going to have to be e to the negative 3s times the Laplace transform of the function that's not time shifted. OK, so there's an application of how to use it. Uh, you'll find this often, that things will have this, uh, this property. Um, again, we're doing signal processing. A lot of times, we want things to turn on at very specific times. Uh, and we want to be able to use uh, Laplace transforms to shift things in time so that the, the turning on and turning off occurs at specific times. We're still able to use our Laplace transforms for everything. So this tool will help us do that. Thank you very much.